So far we've talked about the ligament and tendon and muscle healing and today we're going to talk about the bone healing. So you see the picture of a fracture happening over here. What is going to happen at the beginning is the phase of hematoma. The great thing about the bone fracture is you have a lot of blood supply to the area. So it has ability to bleed which is very important and it starts to clot and what you start to see is a nice formation of the hematoma which is going to lead to the second phase which is a soft callus formation so what you see is the a lot of fibroblasts coming in and chondroblasts coming in fibroblasts are responsible for creating more fibers and try to fill in the gap chondroblasts is going to create some chondrocytes which is a cartilage cell so what you end up having here is a specific cell um, type of the tissue known as fibrocartilage Okay, fill in the gap. This is one type of the cartilage um, that is basically full of fibers. Okay, so yes, you start to fill in the gap, but this callus is nice and soft that if you had to start to load this bone, it might still go right back to here. Okay, you don't have that much of ability to resist the load. Second phase, that soft callus will start to become very hard. So what you see here, what you start to see here is osteoblast activity. Okay, so yeah, we had enough fiber and we had enough chondrocytes maybe formed within this uh, gap. But now we need to start to replace that with the actual bone cell. Osteoblast going to create some osteocyte, osteocytes, which is the bone cell. So you start to have this nice hard callus formation to replace the cartilage. So now it's, it's pretty really to be ready to be loaded. The last phase is remodeling. So this is an ongoing process. This is what we actually have in all the bones that we have in our body. Ongoing process of osteoblast and osteoclast. Osteoblast creating the new bone cells and osteoclast breaking down some of the bone cells. So yes, you're going to have a little bit of a both. Because yes, this bone right there that's sticking out, you may not need that part. So osteoclast need to come in and shape that bone a little bit. Okay, well, osteoblasts continue to reinforce the gap that we used to have, and it's going to close all the way. So, all these entire four phases of bone healing, it's going to take the typical time frame that we are looking at is four to six weeks. And I'm pretty sure you've heard that before. Oh, you broke your bone. It's going to take four to six weeks. Um, that's a typical timeline. But if you're lucky and it happened to injure a area that's full of blood supply or the you know the fracture is very minor maybe it can take as short as three weeks or it could take as long as eight weeks or even longer two terms that i want you to know malunion and non-union malunion is the fracture that has healed but in a less than optimal position so what you see in this little picture here is the radius fracture that got displaced okay so what this patient needed to do is to go into surgery and try to stabilize the segment but let's say that didn't happen Okay, you start to see some heart callus formation here. So yeah, it has started to heal, but not in the optimal position as you can see, and it's pretty obvious. Okay, the angle of the radius is not ideal. Non-union, meaning that the nothing is happening. You wait, 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 and it just doesn't heal. Um, so this might happen in the area of, of avascular. They don't have any blood supply to the area or osteoporosis. Patient is maybe a little bit older, has a little much limited ability to heal so non-union you wait for a long time and then there's just no evidence of healing in that bone okay so what I mean by it could take longer is yeah when you have this kind of malunion or non-union yeah it sure is going to take longer healing of the bone is going to depending on many different factors such as maybe the type of the fracture where you see different types of the fracture here transpersion maybe linear the chance of that healing it might be very good compared to something like a uh, comminuted fracture which you see multiple pieces of the bones it's going to take longer to heal obviously extent of um of the fracture comparing um incomplete fracture versus complete which is going to go all the way it's going to take determine the healing period and stability of the fracture okay uh, maybe it's not quite say displaced but if you are to load this bone, maybe it's going to cause some displacement of the bone, meaning that the it's a very unstable fracture. Okay, it might take longer to heal, or you might need to have a procedure to stabilize the segment. Other tissue damage, and some other things to consider is maybe is it open, is it closed? If it's an open fracture, you see the nice break of the skin, and the bone is now actually exposed. Okay, so what you're gonna have to think about is okay, now we need to probably somehow move this bone back 
okay so we can have a better alignment and also think about some other soft tissue damage that that patient is experiencing whether that's just skin or skin plus ligament and joint capsule all that good stuff now those are going to be needed to heal as well um, this is a picture of the stress fracture okay so this may not be say like a complete fracture all the way but because this patient is experiencing the opposite balance of osteoblast and osteoclast okay we need to find a way to limit the activity of osteoclast and facilitate the activity of osteoblast meaning that this, this patient might have to go through a very long period of not loading that bone vascular supply i think i kind of mentioned it a little bit but it's a very important factor some bones in specific area for example femur shaft you have a great great blood supply but what about the neck and the head of the femur you have very limited breast supply you have very unique artery that are coming in and supply the blood in that area so when you experience like um a femoral head fracture or neck fracture the chance of the healing of that area might be somewhat limited compared to some other areas so this picture is a great great um, example of well one malunion but also two remodeling you see this fracture happening in the humerus and you see nice displacement okay but again for some reason we didn't have surgery so the bone started to heal okay so what you see is here is a malunion of the fracture you see this this is not optimal option but it started to heal okay but what's interesting about this one is this is a remodeling phase somehow it started to look a little bit more straight okay your bone has the ability to to detect that okay I started to heal but this is kind of a weird shape and then um, you know according to the stress amount of the stress that I, I started to experience on this bone this is not ideal position it has ability to detect that so what their bone cells osteoclast and osteoblast started to do was okay I'm going to shape this area a little bit and try to create more bones here so it's going to be a little bit more straight that's where modeling nice balance of osteoclast and osteoblast activity to adjust the bone okay it's still not ideal i still call that as um i still call that as mal union um but it starts to look somewhat better sorry I, I think i said humerus a little earlier but this is the femur thigh bone now for the um, what's gonna do? What 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 do you need to do after fracture? Well, if you're lucky, and then maybe it's a stress fracture case, and then the patient's not that symptomatic, uh, when they're loading the leg, maybe you don't have to have surgery. Maybe you don't have to do anything. It's just letting it heal, just to control. Just you need just to control the amount of the activity and loading that you would do in the bone. Some of the cases you might have to do casting and splinting. So, for example, maybe you have to wear a walking boot for a certain period of time, have to wear this cast or do the finger splinting so we can stabilize the body segment, not going to cause any displacement, taking some stress off and letting it heal. Some of the cases you have to have surgery to stabilize the fracture segment. So, some of the common procedures that you would maybe see in the future is ORIF and an ORREF. This is an open reduction internal fixation versus open reduction external fixation. Okay, so open reduction, they're gonna have surgery to stabilize the segment, um, but you can use internal device or external device to further um, provide the fixation of the bone. So, this is an example of the internal fixation. You're gonna use bolts and plates to stabilize the segment inside of the body, so that's internal. External fixation. You do the exact same thing except that the device is exposed. Okay, it's out. It's um, in the outside of the body. It's external. So, using this kind of procedure, or maybe some kind of immobilization. You, what you're gonna have to be aware is now we're not just looking at the bone healing. We're gonna have to think about the effects that's going to occur over the soft tissue because of the patient not really using or moving the body part. Okay, so after this fixation or period of stabilization, you might have to think about, all right, so now we're going to have to look at the muscle atrophy or potential adhesion that happened during uh, immobilization. You're going to have to think about, okay, how I'm going to attack those at the same time you're going to facilitate the bone healing. So there was a very interesting um, case that we saw in the media that was related to the bone healing. Did you hear anything about this guy and what happened to these two people? Um, I don't know the details, but this guy obviously got mad at his um, equipment manager of the same team. And supposedly they were really good friends, but got into the argument and um, Griffin ended up hitting this guy 
multiple times in the face. And what he suffered, he suffered. I don't know what he suffered. Maybe concussion. I don't know. But what he ended up suffering was the fracture of the hand. He actually sustained the forced metacarpal spiral fracture was what media identified. So he needed to have a surgery to stabilize the segment. Spiral fracture, yeah. Maybe there was a displacement. I don't know. So that surgery uh, was around the January 25th. <clears throat> and what we found out recently was now he needs to have a second surgery and he just had that on February 5th um, I don't know why I would imagine that maybe maybe the fixation was not enough okay maybe just didn't stabilize that bone completely so he maybe started to move so he needed to have a second surgery and uh, the first um, media report uh, report from the first surgery was it's gonna take about four to six weeks just like we just mentioned, four to six weeks. And after the second surgery, the media still continued to say, well, we're still going to keep that four to six timeline because maybe we just that we are a little bit more closer to that six weeks rather than four weeks. Uh, but they're saying that the week are just going to keep the same timeline. Um, it still shouldn't affect the entire healing, which I was somewhat questioned. But yeah, maybe six weeks still might be the somewhat reasonable timeline for him. I would imagine that he's young and healthy don't have any vascular issue so maybe lesson learned from him is okay when you got into an argument with your friends uh, be careful I would say just don't hit him in the face and don't do it repeatedly until you break your hand and that might be the lesson that's learned <laughs>